Alrighty. Alrighty, 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 alrighty. So, I would like to welcome you again to this very first uh, live stream of mine. I would just like right to start in uh, in this very first live stream with the topic. Actually, you guys decided on uh, on my Instagram account. By the way, feel free to also follow me there. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about drum editing. Drum editing in the hip hop context, drum editing in the pop context. Right now, I would like to start with the with a with a drum loop. I created for the guys from Dope Boys Music. Show a shout out to them. Awesome guys, insanely awesome uh, sample packs they've created over the past I don't know how many years, and it's just so so good. Yeah, as I as I as I said, we will talk about the drum production. I will edit the drums for you. Or we gonna edit them together if you have questions about I don't know equalizers compressions other tools to to make the drums more interesting um, and other techni technicalities as way well, as well just let me know so we just start right back in so I have a little session for you which look like which will look like something like this this is a drum a drum loop I actually created a while ago uh, and as you can see I have absolutely nothing on these tracks these are complete blank tracks right here uh, the only thing i did so far is that i kind of like uh cut it out the the, the 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 toms like the, the bleed i had on the toms before and after so the toms are gonna be right now even super clean because you just see there are just these few drum things right here so nothing else so it looks a little bit weird because usually you have some bleed on there, on there as well. Um, this is my personal layout. So basically, this, 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 and this are the tracks, like just the plain tracks, which are the direct signal signals from my interface, which is a, a Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40, which goes over FireWire, then Thunderbolt 2, then Thunderbolt 3 in my MacBook. So and and here, as you can see, I created some groups. For example, this crowd right here goes into the core because this for me is like the core drum set, which is like bass drum in, bass drum out, and this, uh, the sub kick, snare on top, snare on bottom, obviously, snare on bottom, high tom, low tom, and the hi hat. Then I have the parallel compression right here. It's like I, I would do it over the, over one bus uh, because this parallel compression uh, comes from only these channels. If I want some, I will only get it from these channels. I don't need it right now for the for the Wurst. I will, I will explain a little bit later what that is. And the overheads. Anyway, so I have this right here. Then usually under the FX group, what you can see here, this FX bus, I have not only the Wurst mic, uh, but also the, what is it? Um, the Dirt mic, which I highly recommend. More about that later. And... Uh, sometimes I have a NS10 speaker or Yamaha Subkick or I don't know some kind of other DIY uh, Subkick behind me, which is basically also like a um, like a effects mic. Uh, so I have a usually I have a group of three mics which goes on this effect bus. The Wurst, wow, the Wurst mic in this case was <laughs> was weird. <laughs> Good lord. Um, the Wurst mic as it is, it's also known, I think in English it's called a knee mic, right? Because it's the mic which is basically over the bass drum as you can, oh wait, you can actually apply some light right over there, like a little nice light. <laughs> the Wurst mic over there is directly over the bass drum and it kind of like right now, okay, it kind of right now points at the snare drum a little bit, like slightly. But usually I have it pointed, uh, pointed directly on my knee. Uh, and from this, in this case, this is an MD, a Sennheiser MD21. It's, I think it's from the 60s or, or something like this. And uh, so I, uh, the characteristic, it's called, oh God. Um, if someone knows what Kugel characteristic means in English, I will, you know, special offer to you for whatever. And um, so it picks up ba basically everything which is around the mic. So it, keep, it, it, um, it gets the bass drum, the snare drum, also a little bit of the toms, some hi-hats, and if you have a cymbal right on to uh, over it, like in this case, there could be a crash cymbal or ride cymbal, whatever, uh, it, it would pick up this as well. So it's also quite interesting. Also, hello, welcome to all the new viewers right here. I see five viewers, this is 
I'm fucking nervous, especially speaking in English right now on a live stream for the first time. But anyways, and um, yeah, so this is the Wurst mic, and it's called the Wurst mic, which is actually um, a direct translation to a sausage mic, because in the end it could get compressed so much, so much that uh, <laughs> that. The, 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 the track itself will look like, like a sausage because there won't be any kind of, what is it called, like transients or something. It would just look like, like one full line just of white because the compression will be so hard and the editing itself will be just super hardcore on that, on that microphone. Um, it would, in my case, as you can see, because it goes into the effects bus, it's literally just for you know giving character to the drums. A shout out to a good friend of mine, uh, Bebo Hermann. I think we I don't know how many times we talked about just this one mic and um, big inspiration which comes to this is a good friend called uh, Jojo Folk. You have to check him out and uh, an engineer from Berlin. I've never met him, but he's called I think Moses Schneider. And he's like, I think he's even the inventor of the of the Wurst mic, but I'm not sure. We have the FX bus with the Wurst mic in it, and here we have uh, the overhead bus. And in this case, just the overhead right and left goes into this bus. I do this because I can't, uh, I don't have to edit each track on its own because I can root everything in one bus, so I can uh, apply all my edit um, and my all my plugins and whatnot I have to do. Uh, to this um, overhead bus. So this is the setup and then there's one more uh, One more mix bus, which is called crush where I can apply some, just some some stupid distortion overdrive and compression again and what 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 not and In this case, this is a loop 85 BPM and I will just play it as it is you see no leveling whatsoever So let's join in And there you are. It sounds, uh, it sounds like completely convenient recorded drums. Uh, my setup goes, by the way, most of the mics went through my preamps, which are in this case the Audient ASP 800s. Thanks, Simon Gattringer, for getting me those, which are super awesome, super clean, basically. They actually, they're just super clean. And then the other stuff goes uh, through my focus right now. I think the ribbon mics went through a DBX preamp. Okay, cool. Maybe we can just make it more interesting. So this is not only about drum editing, like which plugins are you going to use, but also creeping out my CPU as much as I can. <laughs> and let's see where the journey goes. Uh, it's going to be quite interesting, I guess. Uh, we have three bass drum uh, tracks right here, which is bass drum in, which is a beta, like a sure beta 91A. All right. Then I have a bass drum out, which was at that time a beta 52A. So this is the sub kick. Sub, I just write Yamaha so everyone knows what's going on. Then snare drum top at that time, I think was a M201, which is biodynamic. My bottom mic is uh, SM, sure, SM57. I think at that time, the high tom was a E904, and the low tom was an MD421. Uh, my hi hats are, or is uh, the SM57. My worst mic was at that time quite sure. Damn it. Hello. Yeah. The MD21. 
And the overheads, also quite sure, are the RB500. So the, the mics which are behind me right now were back then my, my overheads because I wanted to have a ribbon sound. Because ribbon mics are so much more, I like the sound, it's so, so muffy, a little bit more open because of the characteristic. Um, but they're so muffy and they're so dry in, in itself, not so clean, not so high resolution. They have a character in itself and they're super cheap, so I, I want to use them. I had at that time also the uh, Shure KSM32, which are, actually this is a Shure uh, KSM32, which are quite expensive, but they're, I don't know, like too normal. They, 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 sound, they sound awesome, also for live, I always use them for live, but they just sound so normal. <laughs> Anyways, cool. Uh, we are now here, we, uh, we labeled everything, Everything is clear so far, and let's listen to it one more time, just half. Okay, alright, so the sound is clear. Now, um, let's start editing, I'd say. So what I always you, you, uh, what I always use and start working with is, uh, as I said, the bass drum. And in this case, because I don't have, for example, like an Apollo X8P or super fancy preamps um, in my system, um, but I have already an Apollo Twin X and uh, and a satellite, so I can use some preamps. Just FYI, you don't have to do this in the sense of this is not the key to get the most awesome bass drum sound. This is just my way of working right here. So, uh, my way, please. And um, yeah, bass drum, I would start with a preamp maybe. Let's start, Let's listen to it like uh, just so, and I just do, I don't know, uh, the whole section. Some more on my headphones. Yeah, this is so typical, so typical Beta 91A. This is such a short and attacky sound, which I, like, which I can use beautifully for for direct sounds, for a very dry sound. So I want to edit in a way that I have the lows and the highs and nothing in the mid to just get a, you know, like a like a like a very attacky sound to get the punch. So let's see what I can do. I'll apply some. I'll apply some cream right here. Let's. Neve, this is a beautiful preamp emulation. I really like it, and I use it just to add some saturation, which I do in a way I show you. It's already the signal is already at minus seven dB, so I have not that much headroom. But what I, what I'm doing right now is I'm 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 tuning in some 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 saturation with the preamp, like literally like. Uh, I, I use the 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 the, uh, the preamp itself to gain saturation and gain as well, and then I can kind of balance it with the output. So I can I could go full full way. I just demonstrated. You will see it's going to be super fucking loud. I'm so sorry. I can go full way. Doesn't sound nice, but I could balance it with the output. It's just about. How much saturation I want to I want to get, you know. So I apply a little bit less. Yeah. So the level is quite quite cool because after that, after I applied the preamp, I want to apply some uh, um, compression. We apply some compression right here. I use the DBX one one sixty. You could also use, by the way. Uh, like the the intern stuff. For example, in Logic, in Logic itself, which comes with insane uh, insane stuff. There's the compressor, and in this compressor, if, if I'm not sure if I'm if I'm right or wrong right now, I think is this the emulation of the DBX one sixty, 
or this. I think these are the 1176 emulations and this is the DBX. So you can also do everything with the, with the I mean, Logic stock plugins. It's so easy peasy lemon squeezy, literally. Alrighty, let's switch to some DBX160 right over here. I just love this. So. Right now something is happening already. Yeah, so I use this I use this compressor right now just f to to do some like needle bouncing and um, this is just to kind of compress just the peaks to just calm them down a little bit that each each bass drum sound or the loud bass drum sound gets a little bit more you know sh sh just shut down a little bit more. So I do that. So what I did right here is just I put the threshold little quite high, the compression super low, the ratio, and uh, and the gain, some gain, just to, to, to get them some more output. All right, cool. Uh, now the next plugin would be, in this case, um, I'm going to use the first EQ. Um so this is this is a waves plugin. So this is not even I don't know like uh, UAD stuff, this is just waves. What I do right here, I just do some cleanup. Just clean up. I don't need, I don't need character, I don't need any fancy uh super expensive EQ. You could actually also do this with the you know with this one, you could do this as well. Doesn't matter at all. Like literally, please. Just some cleanups, uh, cleanup stuff. I like this one because I, I just I just know it quite well. All right, some okay. I have to concentrate. So super, um, the peak. I just make it super small. Is it called peak? I, I don't even know. And some gain to apply some attack. Make it a little bit more sharp. Let's see if I leave it like this. And there's always in the bass drum, especially I use at that time I used Sonor, Vintage, Sonor Vintage, Black Slate, 20 inch bass drum with razor head and a hole in it. So it was kind of dry. It had, I think it has a pillow from the outside and a small blanket from the inside. So it was kind of dry as you can hear, but also a little bit... It was cool, but it was kind of clacky, so I want to get rid of some frequencies. So the high frequencies are in a shelf. You can choose to a bell, but it doesn't matter right now. The high frequencies are a shelf. So when I do, for example, I have the, the frequency on 8K, which are 8,000 Hertz, and I apply 3 dB of gain. It would look something like, not absolutely not something like this. Uh, where is it? What did I say? 8,000, 8, uh, this. And now I apply 3 dB gain. It would create something like this. This is 4 dB. Can you focus? Can you focus? Can you focus? Can you? Well, this is so difficult. Oh my God. 3, D of, uh, 3 dB of gain. In this case, I also applied a high cut to 5,000. So what I did, I get rid of this guy. I don't need it. So what I did is, you have the high cut right here, and what I did is I went down to 5k. So in this case, something like this would happen. Uh, happen. So here's 5k, and I would completely get rid of the, the high, high thing what I just did. So I don't even use this. You know what I mean? Because I already applied. If I don't apply the high cut, it's totally fine to tune in 3dB of 8k right there, like a little high boost, which is quite quite interesting. But if I use the high cut already till 5k, it just doesn't matter. So I just completely leave the high frequencies out because I always do this. Huh. So this is the situation right here. I get rid of the high shelf because I don't need it. I do this. 
I apply the this thing and now we come to the high mid like the HMFs the high mid frequencies uh, and I apply at around four five four six uh, um, kilohertz I apply a, s a very slight Q with 3 dB so it looks like something like this uh, what do I do uh, oh. I go up to four or five this is way too this is quite this is quite difficult to, to kind of rebuild everything with that a very small Q so something like this maybe and I apply 3 dB of gain so it would look something like this it looks kind of strange in it so uh, what I what I do right here is I just apply some basically some 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 attack to to the drums you get it oh I can rid of the, get rid of this so whatever I change here right now is also in here just to visualize what the EQ is doing um, just to, uh, also just to, to to make sure this EQ doesn't have the exact same properties as the um, SSH channel from Waves but just to show the functions of each setup here, you I think you get the point. So uh, this is what happening here. I showed with the filter. Yeah. Now off. That's quite a difference, isn't it? Huh. So I get rid of all the high frequencies. I think in this case, I think the SSL is not high cutting as hard as this dude is. So I go to this and maybe, oh, maybe I also do this. Something like, something like this, just to have some space. Cool. And, uh, but three dB is actually a little bit much. I go a little bit down right here. And now I come to the low mid frequencies, which is everything between, I think 200 from here to where it is so this whole area from here to here is like the okay not not as high yeah like to, from here till here this is the whole like low mid area and uh, it's quite interesting to use this because in 99.9 percent .9 i completely dip out everything which is in, in this area this is a little bit much so I do like a like a proper Q, like a quite quite high, and I literally do this, maybe like like this. That I I go down by around five hundred usually, and I completely dip everything out. Let's listen to this. What happens then? And in, oh this is already in. So sorry, out. Oh. And in. Super cool because it gets extremely tight. It gives it gets completely tied up and way more controlled and but also a little bit hollow, a little bit more, but way tighter just than the original signal. And this is what we are looking for right now. This is how I do it. So you have to imagine that, as I said, that the uh the signal is coming from the microphone into the preamp and I literally I literally just turn in the preamp that's it so I don't have any fancy I don't know like a, a 1073 preamp or any API which already adds color or way it even I don't know like change up the EQ beforehand before the recording so you can tune in your drums properly I have to do everything in the post to give the drums the character. So basically the the signal I get combined with the tuning I applied on the drums is is the direct signal in my door. So what I it would this thing here would look something like this. I have 5k uh sorry, not 5k, bullshit. Um 0.5k, so 500 hertz. And how much did I tune this out? I think I go full force always, something like this. So this is around this this cue right here. It's even a little bit more. 
uh, a little bit less even, so sorry. And then I go 12 dB down. This is exactly like this area. This is the replica, the visual re replica in this SSL channel, this area right here. Again, a Waves SSL channel does it a little bit different. So it would it would look a little bit different on an on a visual uh, channel queue, uh, like this one, for example, the FabFilter Pro Q3. Uh, but like the essence is the same. So I think this is quite an interesting tool what this kind of a, like the SSL channel is doing to a track. Oh, and now I want to apply some, 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 like a little, I don't know. Uh, I, w I want to, I would like to apply some, some low boost, like some sub boost. So I go to, let's say, I know that the sub kick, for example, has a peak by around 67 hertz. But I also know that the that the Beta ninety one A is a quite what is it called like a very wide microphone for a bass drum mic. So I can go a little bit lower even maybe. Let's say I go to maybe I, I go to fifty right now and I apply three dB of gain. And now I want to do something. So this would look something like this right now. I go to fifty fifty hertz. Fifty hertz. This is right now a shelf. Let's change the shelf, and I want to apply 3 dB on, yeah, beautiful term, huh? 3 dB of gain right here. All right. Now I click on in the SSL channel. If I, cli if, if I click on bell, which I will do, if I click on bell, this would look in here something like this. Uh, the this would be the change so that you don't just open up the low end by 3 dB but when you click on bell it makes it just more controlled that you just really point out one area of course you you get a little bit more over it as well so you get everything over 50 hertz as well a little bit boosted but not like i don't know 20 and and, and 30 so much as for example with the shelf so they, this is maybe something quite good to know. If there's anyone in my audience right now, under the eight viewers, eight viewers, again, eight viewers in here is just way too much. Oh God, I'm so nervous. <laughs> Woo, nice. That's so cool. Thank you for joining in. This is, I, I, I'm so happy. I'm so damn happy. How many, are there any Germans outside? Please raise your hand right now. Let me see your hand. Okay, I want I want to know all of these eight who are English speaking and who are German speaking. Please write it in the comments. I would really love to know. All right. So here it is, and uh, that's it. That's basically it for now. This section right here, you can see at the at the SSL channel, uh, you see all the filters, which are just which is basically the EQ, and this is it. This is. This is what the kind of like the SSL, SSL channel would look like if you would have a frequency wave and you would apply, apply something on it. Um, the point right now is I will delete everything which is in the Pro EQ because I want to apply something else. But now you have an idea how I, for example, kind of clean up my drum. This totally depends from bass drum mic to bass drum to tuning and whatnot. It's always changes. So. This is not something you can apply on, but this is maybe something like a. I would. I always have this thing as a preset in my mind, and from here I go on. So this is quite useful, as I think it is. You know. Anyway, cool. I will delete this right now. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't need it. So I will apply all the changes to here because I will use this. I will also listen to the bass drum for the first time. Ah, sorry, I have to tune it in. Woo! A little too much. Let me have a look at my activity. Cool, looks nice. 
uh to all people out there um connection and all that stuff is cool let me know And what I do now is, so I applied everything which is in here, and I also apply, I don't know why, uh, thanks, awesome, top, the top connection, awesome, that's great. Um, I don't know why, um, but I also apply some, some compression on, on this as well. So I go, I go up with threshold, and apply some compression, the ratio, this is enough basically. I don't know why I do it, this is some kind of a habit, I, I, uh, used to do it I don't want to see what's happening when I apply more compression this is the meter right here okay, I want it fast, I want not a lot and not like A and I get some more output this is also a habit. I don't know. I like it. Cool. Uh, now I uh, now I put on another EQ, which kind of does the same thing, but with a bit, little bit more character, as I feel. This is the UAD API channel strip. Um, and the cool thing with this, it has like like a couple of things combined: the 212, the 250, and the 235, the 220, uh, the 225, and the uh, 550, which I love. And this is basically the whole channel strip, which is kind of cool. So what I do is I do some more cleanup with a little bit more in my, I don't know, it feels like this uh, with a little bit more character. So I cut out some high frequencies, uh, some high mids actually. Um, and I do another dip on 500 and some boost on 100 maybe. Nice. Oopsie. Take the dim. Take the take the take the dim. 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 Da. This could be also. This could be already a lot, but I don't know. It, it feels cool, and the headphones feels nice. Yeah, I like it. Nice. Give a little bit more output. Oh, this is a, oh, this is a lot. Cool. This is it. Uh, so, and, and as you can see, I just apply the EQ, not the gate. Sometimes I apply a gate. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I also go with a high pass and or a low pass, which is just the opposite side. So, a low pass is a high cut. And a high pass is a low cut. Yeah, just for all the nerds out there. Maybe interesting, maybe not. Anyways. And now I could apply, if I want to, I just try. I could apply an uh, FabFilter EQ again, which also works perfectly. By the way, I just get rid of this here. Huh. Um, I could also apply like the channel EQ. I just use the FabFilter. I like it, it's nice. And uh, just. I like the visual 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 visualization, the good old visualization. Mm, anyway. huh, so what I do is yeah, I do some some I, I put in some notches. So I will look for a frequency a frequency which just annoys me. Yeah, and there we have. Usually something between hundred and two hundred uh, hertz. Something like some uh, this just a frequency which just it's just annoying like literally just annoying and I just completely notch it out. <laughs> wow, this is tight. Hey. 
This is a tight bass drum. I like it. Let's listen to it from here without all the things. And now with everything. Yeah. This is nice. I like it. It's cool. Makes sense, I guess. Yeah, I like it. Let's go with this. Uh, the last thing I usually apply is some... Also, shout out to uh, my friend Yo-Yo, who recommended me this, this plugin, which I would recommend to everyone out there. Out there is the Beta 91... What? No, sorry. The <laughs> SPL Transient Designer. It's super easy because it just basically has uh, two important knobs, which is the sustain and the attack. So this is a lot of attack, this is lesser attack, this is a lot of sustain, this is less sustain. That's it. And what I do right here... Hmm, put it on zero. Great. What I do to make it even tighter, just a little bit tighter, I just turned on the sustain a little. So let's watch what happens. So it's way shorter, isn't it? So without and with uh, with uh, the SPL transient designer, super short. Okay, this is a little too short. I just turn it up a notch a little, and that's it. Cool. Based on one done after I don't know almost an hour. <laughs> Um, cool, great. Let's move to bass drum out. I from now on it's going to a little bit uh, going to be a little bit faster because I basically just do the the same thing, but as I explained in the beginning, I will do it a, a bit differently because the signal is just it just sounds different than the bass drum in. Let's just listen to it in comparison. So here's the bass drum in, without any edit. And here's the bass drum out without any in it. Same bass drum, same beat, same Tillman playing the drums, uh, but completely different sounds. It's super interesting how this develops. I would, by the way, com oh, actually it sounds kind of bad anyway. So, and after the edit, it sounds this, it sounds like this. And what I do now, uh, or is it not so good? No, I, I leave it like this. I apply everything but the preamp, so I start with a compression. I have basically actually no idea why I don't apply the preamp on the uh, bass drum out microphone, but I think I do it because I feel that the uh, the bass drum in is the more important one in this case. And I want to save up on a little bit DSP power. And I also feel that sometimes on the bass drum out with a preamp in front of it, with a lot of situation, weird things could happen. Um, but it's just just a feeling how I do it. Sometimes I apply one, sometimes not, and whatnot. And um, yeah, so cool. Uh, bass drum out, we have uh, some compression over here. I do the same thing. I... Uh, Apply it just a little bit to get some needle dancing right there. Nothing happens, I apply a little bit more. Actually, maybe I would go with a little bit more. These are just very fine adjustments. I like it, it's cool. And it is. Uh, let's let's see how it sounds without. Yeah, it feels a little bit more controlled, just for my own thing. Then I applied the uh, on my preamp. By the way, little tip from the inside. It's not at all from the inside, and I don't. I'm sure that. A lot of people who use Illogic already has it, but these to make these categories, it's just so much more easy. Before I had those, I had to all, go all the way down, go to audio units, and then, I don't know, for example, Waves Audio, and then I have to look through all these plugins, 
And the cool thing about Logic is I think you can also do it in, in Cubase and in FL Studio and I don't know, all these, what is it called? Like uh, Reaper on, and, and, and Pro Tools. You can just go to Logic Pro Preferences, you go to Plugin Manager, and there you can create yourself your own, as I do here, your, your own categories, and you can just drop in the, uh, the, the plugins you basically always need. This is so cool. This just saves so much time. All right. Uh, I go to my SSL channel strip. Mm, I can't read. Cool. There it is. I think I could drink something. Cheers, by the way, to all the six viewers are with, uh, who are still with me. It's such a pleasure. Hmm. All right, um, I clean up a little. I don't like the signal at all. Anyway, just make it a little. this some compression again again I don't know why I do this but uh, it's more compact I don't know I like it You hear that there's something super extremely annoying what's going on. I think it's also like 200 hertz, kind of a hmm, like a like a drone chip landing. Hmm. Oh, I don't like it. So I have to apply some better tuning, I guess. Anyway, half a year ago, I think this piece from September 2020, 2020, September 2020. So more than a half year old. Um. But the uh, uh, funny thing about that, it got uh, these beats get released right now. So you can buy a little ad right here. You can buy on dopeboykids.com and on splice.com under Dope Boys. You can buy my sample packs, uh, the Petsy Drum Breaks Volume One, One and Two, and uh, you can I think each each uh, sample pack has like 55 drum breaks in it it's pretty cool so buy you have money buy it great EQ you in hmm it's a little interesting uh, too much low end, I don't like it. It's cool. Now let's clean up hardcore. Wow, this is something I would definitely I right, change for the next time. Yeah, you can see what's going on here. A lot of low end, but I will fix this later. Actually, I like it, I have to, but just have to control it a little bit more. Doom. Okay, I have I have to keep this in mind. Actually, I like it. It's not at all irritating anymore. It's just 
the characteristic I like. It's right now it just sounds a little bit more mm, just sounds controlled. Before the before the edit, you just heard the tone, and now since we controlled the bass drum a little bit more, you have the punch and the, you have the attack. I'm super tired right now. Wow. Ich bin müde. Ah, go on, clean out my glasses. By the way, these are fake. These are just blue light filters. That's all. Um, yeah, so the bass from out gets a little bit more interesting right now because it could add some character to the whole beat with this boom, boom, boom. This is quite cool. Quite cool, isn't it? By the way, what does my audience look like right now? German or English? It would be super cool to know. Please let me know. A German English speaking. If you're from India, which could be possible. Um, just let me know if you're an English speaker or German. I, I clean I clean glasses like an idiot. What is it? <sighs> nice. How's the internet connection? I think the stream looks kinda nice right now. It's pretty cool. Pretty 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 cool, ain't it? All right. Uh, yeah. Maybe a little bit. Nah, I'll just leave it all right now. I just yeah, I'll just leave it all right now. So let's let's see how they sound together. Wow, that's a lot. I think this is such a cool signal, isn't it? Super dry. Wow. But I, I turn it I turn it down a notch and this as well. Just a little bit more. This tone is so cool. I don't know. I start I, I start liking it. Yeah, we can we can do something with it. Anyway, okay. Let's go let's go ahead. Uh, now we come to the subkick, to the Yamaha subkick, and as I said, it's quite interesting. I have, I have right now, I have a DIY subkick in front of my bass rub, and um, and um, the, the the peak of the the subkick. So you have to imagine each each microphone has like a preferred, I don't know, frequency response, and the Yamaha subkick has its sub peak at around 65 to 67 hertz, which is insanely deep. Uh, uh, anyway, and my DIY subkick, which I built for a total of 50 bucks, euros in this case. It's ba basically just a, like a monitor membra membrane from the... Uh, Bebo, if you are there, please please let me know what the, what, what, what the company of the, of the speaker which you recommended me. I forgot. Anyway, and it's DIY. It's just literally just two cables soldered on it. Uh, I think polarity is um, reversed. And then with an XLR adapter in the, uh, at, the, at, the, at the other end, uh, plugged in into my interface, that's it. That's the whole thing. And I built like a fancy, I don't know, like a DIY uh, clamp and, and, and an adapter for the, and the, for the mic stand and all that stuff. But this is not going to, to matter right now. Um, and it's peak, so my DIY speaker has has a peak at 40 hertz. And you think that, you know, 60 is insanely deep, but 40 hertz, of course, is not only deeper, but it makes a huge difference in the in the whole sound. It makes it so much warmer and brighter, like brighter and like more broader. So not brighter, because brighter is like, you know, but it's nice, it's awesome. Cool. Um, by the way, if you uh, guys wonder why I'm looking always to this side sometimes, um, there's the chat, which I please continue, please continue um, this thing, uh, watching and all that stuff and writing. Please, please chat, please chat, please chat on the chat, chat on the chat, chat. Cool. Um, Yamaha Subkick. What I do here, I apply any kind of EQ and do, do the following thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's pretty easy. You see, it's already quite controlled. But what I really do is just this. I just want those deep frequencies, these sub frequencies. Yeah. Nice. This is so warm. This is so cool. I like it. This is it. This is the whole thing I do. And uh, the whole thing to, to, to control the sound and to, to make the sound, let's say. And what I, what I now do, I, I think I also posted on a story of mine on Instagram or, what, or whatever. Um, I apply some, some overdrive um, to, to make it just more interesting because it's, it's basically, I mean, it's just very deep. That's it. So there's no character in it. So what I do sometimes, I put it on directly or I get it from a bus. So I just install a bus right here. Put an overdrive on, like literally just the, um, what I wanted to say, on a distortion, I guess, yeah. Distortion, overdrive from Logic. This is the Logic thing. Like do like, I don't know, 90B or something, a little bit deeper and no, output is fine. Let's see what hap what happens. Actually, I can I could push it a little bit more, isn't it? I want to apply some. No, this is fine. I just apply the 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 overdrive as a bus, and so I get more gain. Oh, this is bad. This is nice. A bit less drive. Maybe I get a little bit more signal from from top. This is cool. I like it. Little, little bit, just, just, there's just more in it then. So let's hear how they sound all together. Oh. I could live with that. It's getting nice. Anyway, new part. Okay, uh, bass drum is done. I should get a coffee in some time. Um, bass drum is done. Oh, ah. Oopsie. Bass drum is done. Bass drum is done. Let's move on to the snare drum. Uh, what happened with the snare drum already? Let me think. I think nothing, really. Wow, that was a controlled snare drum. Usually I have much more higher bleed, but as you can see, I have a lot of bleed on my on my hi hat. Why is there so much bleed on my hi hats? All right, so the actual sound, which is quite prominent though, is not as hard as the snare drum on it. It's 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 that is weird. That is weird. All right, snare drum. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Hey, everybody, how you doing over here? Let's go, I should, I should leave it like this. This is not at all irritating if I continue talking like this with this delay and all that stuff. <laughs> okay, cool. Snare drum. Um, this now gets a little bit more, uh, yeah, just more tricky and more complicated because it just gets more. No, it's actually pretty easy. So I apply a preamp. In this case, I usually go with a Neve. Again, there's, for example, in Waze, is there, is there a preamp in, in Logic, in Dynamics? Anyone out there who knows a a preamp, like a emulation of a preamp in Logic, it would be nice to know. But uh, you can also go to, where is it? Where is it? 
I think it's also is it yeah there's this one from waves you can see they're quite similar this is uh, I think this is designed by Andrew Sheps in Sengai highly recommend it looks very similar just has a little bit more stuff there's also a uh, uh, there's not only in high, uh, high, what is it? It's a high cut. Yeah, this is, what, yeah, a low, a low cut. There's a low cut, high pass, low cut, high pass, low cut. And, and this also has a high cut and a low cut. So the high cut is new. Pretty cool. And you can do the high Q uh, situation over here, which makes the Q factor just smaller and more peakier. Um, and you can also use, also from Waves, I, which I also recommend, is the, where is it? The Chaps Omni Channel. This is a pretty cool plugin, I feel. This is an all in all plugin. Is it loading? Did I click on it? Oh, it's loading. Why is it loading so much? Yeah, this is the whole thing. Also pretty cool. I think it's also, yeah, as you can see, so it even has its name on it. On it. Um, Jesus, why is it loading so much? Oh, CPU is fine, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and here you can not only I don't know change the the, the, the you have the DS EQ compression gates. Uh, you have the sidechain options, of course, input and output um, stuff. You have a limiter in it. You have uh, with the threshold even you can you can't even apply. You can also apply a limiter with threshold with adjustable threshold. And you have the um, saturation, which is the best actually. It's pretty cool. Sounds good. All the three are fine plugins. I just like to use the UAD one. But you can achieve everything with the software. All right, A. All right, A. Hmm. All right. I want to hear the snare. So I put in saturation over the line input uh, because sometimes the mic input is just way harder. In, in the plugin I go with the line one. I think um, when I plug it in, like if I if I would have this plugin in real and I would go in with an XLR, uh, I would use the, the mic side of course. So you have the mic side on the left and the line on the right. But um, because the, the signal itself is already preamped and already recorded, I just used the line situation, which is also fine, in my opinion. Uh, yep, so this is cool. And now, ladies and gentlemen, something I love to apply every single time under compression, and there it is, my dear distressor, which I want to have in real life at some point in my life. Hey, four viewers, by the way, welcome to this uh, this thing right here. I want to know, is, has, has anyone subscribed or something? Can I look it? Can, can I see how it... Can I see if everything changes or something? It would be so interesting to know. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not at the point right now where... Oh, wow, 19 followers! So what, whoever followed me right now, uh, thanks for following. This is so cool. 19 followers! People are actually liking it in some way, what I do here. All right, snare drum. Uh, this, the distressor in this case is a, is a compressor, a very special one. And uh, this applies a lot of character. In character, I always say this word, and I, I always say this the, the same word in, in German. Uh, when I mean character, it's that the sound itself come, becomes more relevant and more, it just it just gets some life in it. I don't know. I don't I'm because I'm not the biggest fan of clean signals. 
um, while recording it in this in my setup right now in this in this 18 18 square meter room uh, it's totally fine to just record the signals as clean as possible but i want to have the chance the chance in the end to to just add and create some character with the drums so i always use uh, compressors and eqs and and, and 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 other tools to to just apply more character in this case it's a it's a distressor i really like this pretty cool also available from plugin alliance i guess which is a little bit cheaper um but you can you can use everything just add character this is my way to do it some more input i go to four i add this i add this Oh, nice. This is a lot of release, like a long release. This is a... No, wait, it's the other way around. So this is a very, qu very quick release, I guess. No, but I use it like this because I want to hear more, more snare drum, you know. And then I go to output and just adjust it till it's at like zero ish. Yeah, this is way too loud. This is cool. Take the dim. Take the dim. Look at the team. Cool, this is nice. Mm, what can I do now? I have some some saturation, I have some compression, actually a lot of compression, and I usually switch to uh EQ, I guess. Wait, let me think. Oh god. Because every time it's different, it depends on the production. So this we go in a hip hop direction. I want to clean it up a little. Let's let's just go with an EQ. Why not? So I want to clean up a little bit more. I know it's actually quite. I don't know. I don't need it, but I want to clean up a little bit. A uh, little bit less harsh. It works for me. Why is it at 10 dB? Jesus. Maybe I can do it with... No, I want to apply more, more compression and just turn down the, the output. Nice. Everyone has. Uh, if everyone has any questions, please feel free to ask, because uh, sometimes I feel I'm just talking to myself, um, and I would like to interact with you guys. So let me know if you have any questions or things I have to. I should explain again, or I should change, or something which I do stupidly out of I don't know, convenience. So let's interact with each other if you feel like. If you feel like. So this is cool. I would leave it like this. I don't know why. 
But it works somehow for me on my headphones. Sounds cool. Sounds clean. Sounds has some some punch to it. It's nice. Alrighty, alrighty. Let's move on. I want to do something, but I'm not sure what I do want, want to do next. Um, oh yes. Which one is it? I'm not sure which one it is. What's the wrong one? Of course. I don't want the, the usual, I want the legacy version. Uh, there it is. Legacy. Oh, that's bad. You see what I did here? Before? After. Where well, that is way more volume. We can use it. Maybe I turn it down in the end. Or actually turn it off. But this is just, this is the UED uh, Helios type 96 Legacy preamp. And I there's like one little function. This this tip is from, from my good friend Bebo. Bebo Hermann, insanely good drummer. Check him out. And I think he's gonna be a doctor or something. So cool guy, can repair himself and uh, does good drumming. And he's he once um, recommended, if you have this plugin for, for any reason, just literally all you do, don't do anything in here. Just don't do anything. Just do this. Bloop. That's it. And you get, it applies a wonderful, I don't know, like a more bassy sounding snare tone around, what is it like? 60 hertz in this case which is awesome you see I, I don't i don't have anything else edited here nothing has changed it's the whole even even output level, whatever and maybe also something i want to do is using the uh basically a gate and expand at the same time and for this i use the there it is, the Valley Papal Dynamite. Also mono, please, thank you. Yeah, exactly not this. Well, this thing is incredible. This is from Softube. I think you can also buy it on different platforms. I have it from UA, and uh, it's 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 I it's it's acting like an uh, expander. So everything which surrounds, uh, it has many options. In, in, I don't know what this really is here. I think well, wait, there's an there's an explanation even. This is so cool. So whatever you do, it shows what you do. So cool, such a great tool. Sometimes too much, but in this case could work, isn't it? Yeah, let's leave it like this. Let's put the bass drum on top. That's cool, so much, so much fun. Wow, that's, that's bad. Hey, I turn the, turn it on. Oh, this, I shouldn't do this, sorry. The point right now where it sounds actually a little bit better is because um, because without expansion you can hear through the snare uh, mic uh, mic signal you can hear the the the, the hi hat and the snare wires mare and the even the 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 reaction from of the bass drum on the snare wires so right now it actually sounds more like a whole kit. <laughs> it sounds like a whole kit. Alright, um, but I leave it on because I wanted to have it a little bit more 
isolated, at least now. Okay? <sighs> Could use some air actually. Also my MacBook maybe. Can I turn on? Can, can I? What happens if I do this? Wait. Oh, ah. oh I shouldn't do this. Oh, this is... <laughs> this is embarrassing. Oopsie. All right, guys, I just brought my headphones. No, seriously, everything is cool. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, next time, just keep an eye on. How many people saw this? Seven people. All right, you have a laugh for today. Ah! <laughs> Nine. Oh, I just saw it. Great, okay, cool, let's continue. Oh, some fresh air, that's awesome. Uh, snare bottom is going to be quite easy and fast. It sounds weird. Actually, it sounds kind of cool. Oh, uh, already. Hmm. I don't want to change much, honestly. It's a good signal. I want to see what the EQ says. Yeah, I can do a small low cut maybe. What I do here is, in this case, on this one, this is a frequency a frequency I don't really like when it's loud, but it's, but it's cool when it's kind of like, what can I say, a little bit turned down, or just just low volume. And with this function over here, what is it called? Is there anything where you can explain what that exactly is? Okay, dynamic range. I don't know what that ex actually means, but whenever this 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 frequency actually works like a multi-band compressor, uh, and when it when whenever it gets kind of activated, it cuts down the um, the frequency by around two d. No, wait, by around one point. Let's say one point five dB ish. Any change? Yeah, I just have the high frequencies. Cool. Actually, I like I like a lot a lot about this the signal. I make the low cut a little bit less harsh right here. Put it down like this. Maybe like this. Cool. This is it for now. I combine those two signals. And I think I have to do a face, what was it? Face inversion, right? Is it called? It feels better when it's Inverted. It feels better when it's inverted. What would, guys, what would you say? Can you hear that? About the face inversion? This is now, the face is inverted. So, I can also go in here and show the signal. Actually looks good-ish. Yeah, weird as always. 
So you, you see here that the snare drum top is going down, then up and down. And the snare bottom is going up, down, kind of stays down, then comes up, and then the whole thing down here while the snare top is, uh, is up with the frequency. So, and here in the end, you can see it's completely uh, like uh, flushing each other out. So whenever you have like something like this here in the end, it kind of means that the frequencies will, what is it like? They will bump in each other and it just doesn't work and it will phase and it just won't sound nice. So what I do, I can re invert the phase so I would switch it. If I change it here, you won't see it because this is not in real time. Um, I feel that the phase should be, it should get inverted. The difficult thing, as I said, is whenever you apply a preamp, compression, even an EQ or whatever, the cha the phase will change because you you access it and you want to change it so that it sounds differently. That's good to know. So for all out there who think, okay, yeah, just let's just edit the drums and then check phases, it also just doesn't work if to check the phases first and then edit this because also then everything changes. So it just, you know, it's a, it's a vicious circle. Um, so what I, what I do is I just listen to it and I just decide what's better. So I feel when I invert the face, it, the snare gets more punch. Back to normal. It sounds phasey in my ears. Anyway, I just turned down, I just turned down a notch. Like this maybe, just to a little bit, just to add some wires, to add some brightness. Maybe this would be also, oh, this would be so cool, I want to try it. I've never, never tried it before. I go on tools and I have this plugin called Fresh Air, I think it's from Slate, isn't it? It's, I think it's a free plugin from Slate. Wow, this is cool. This is so cool. Yeah, this is bullshit. Maybe a little. This is cool. Oh my god. This could be also like a high shelf, but I do it like this. I think it's nice. This is nice. Nice! Now I skip to the I skip to the hi-hat. Because I will do the toms later because they're just so, you know, like here and there and then that's it. Um I switch to the hi-hat. And for me, hi-hats are always like the soul in the soup. Do too much, it's it's done, do to less, it sounds like huh? Um So I, I just try to apply the right amount of salt to, to the hi to make it sound more interesting. That's it. Why did I hit crackle? Wasn't. Okay, cool. So I want to add some... I want to add some, 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 some nice colors to the hi-hat. So what I do is... Uh, I start with... I want to listen to it. Wanna... Wow, this sounds nice. Wow, this sounds nice. Funny, I slowed down a little at the at this point. I wanna, 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 I want to apply something. I, I need to think again. I know. I go with an EQ just to clean up again, because there's some rubbish um, in the in the low mid stuff. Yeah, I want to clean up that a little. So I just go with the, the low cut right here. No, just careful listening.
Maybe something like this. Not sure. And and then now, oh guys, I'm so so fucking excited. Am I allowed to say this? I'm so damn excited to uh, to share this with you. Where where is it? It's some compression and decapitator. The decapitator is maybe one of the coolest and most used plugins in my productions. Uh, because this is the thing I always look for. It's a compressor which is just there to add color, literally. So nice. Okay, let's push on punish. Let's see what happens. Well, that is too much. Let's go here. Okay, again, as I said, maybe this wasn't the best, yeah, the best, I don't know, the right way to do it. Because you can see that the snares are just so loud in the room and the, and the heights are so, so small. So I feel definitely that I should compress it even a little bit more. So I apply the, the, the deca decapitator, like a proper, proper, proper. To give it a little, a little more dirt, you know, it's just like the... And um, let's compress it a little bit more just to get, let's say, get rid a little bit more of the of the higher peaks. So some more from every compression. What can I use? What can I use? What can I use? Let's go with um, an old school CLA 76. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it works. As you can see, it compresses down the, the snare a little and brings up the hi hat again. So. so now it sounds. Wait. So now it sounds, of course it's louder, but now it sounds that the height is in front. Or oh, am I wrong? Now you can hear the height properly and you feel that, aha, that's a height mic and not like a, I don't know where it was mic, but it kind of sounds like the snare mic with a lot of height on. Um, so this is quite cool. Anyway, so we have the hi-hats. The hi-hats come to a point, and now I apply another plugin I like, uh, which is the Sooth 2 by, what is it? Oak Sound, right? It's, is it Oak Sound? Is it Oak Sound? Wait, I want, I want to know. Audio units? Oak Sound, it's Sooth 2. Yes, it's a, I would say Scandinavian brand. I don't know, you have to do, you have to have iLog for this, which is a little irritating. But the plugin is just awesome. So what it does, it just literally, it's like a, I don't know, it, it's like a reverse EQ. It, whatever you put in, it just drops the frequencies out. So, and it, and it kind of analyzes which frequencies are annoying. So let's have, a, let's have a listen, first of all, without. And let's drop it in. And what you can hear when I click on listen, no, I want to hear everything. Oh no, okay, PK. It automatically drops out the frequencies which frequencies which are annoying. So this is dropped out, which just makes it so much, uh, so much more soft and so sandy. I like when the high it sounds a little bit more. It's not like. A so it's more like, a sh 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 more like a shaker, you know. This would be. This is so cool. Again, I just, damn it, yeah. What is it? Cool. So this is this works. I I can put it full in that you hear the effect even more. It just it will sound horrible, but you know what I mean. And without.
so here the how sharp the hi it sounds was and this time it was a uh, Silgen key rope 14 inch I had without anything on it. It was just a blank hide and I think a towel inside. But what is hard? Oh, my, sorry. I have to wait a little for my CPU to come down a little bit. But, I mean, listen to it. Just listen to this band right here. Yeah, this is stuff I don't want to have. What about this? This is not that. Yeah, maybe this more. This is perfect. That's awesome. All right, hi-hats are pretty much done. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have to cut out the listen. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like something. I can I can work with that. I think I think go in a little bit more on the decapitator maybe May, maybe oh it's, oh it's a lot. Okay, no, I won't do that. I will go a little bit more high cut, a little bit less, a little more low uh, low cut as well. And, uh, Yeah, works for me. Mm, all right, parallel compression comes later, definitely. Now let's go to the one effects uh, mic, which I edit directly on the channel, on the track itself. And this is going to be. Uh, I I wish I could have more viewers right now. This is this is going to be the funniest and the, just the best part of the whole production. This is just so cool. I love it. Um, so we take the Wurst mic and let's play it. Awesome. A, 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 A. This is so cool because everything is on it. I could, I could do something else, but what I do right now is I go to my uh, compressions, I choose the Devilog. And the devlog is also a plugin, which is just quick, quick in use. It just doesn't have, you know, like threshold and then ratio. No, what it does, it takes, it has crush and crunch. And right now I will explain what it does. For example, if I turn the, so right now it sounds like this without anything changed. It just sounds like this. All right. Works. A. Perfect. Cool. This is already cool. Now let's kick up a uh, crusher notch. Yeah. I go full force. Definitely compression. And the other thing, crunch. Distortion. Nice. So this is this distortion and compression at the same time. Very basic stuff, I guess. Yeah, I just, I, everything is on zero. I just turn it on. This is so cool. Oh my God. This is just, it just works. Already perfect, but let's go more in. I want to have more character. You hear the symbol. This is this is this is gold. This would be loud in the mix. Hey. Works for me. We will we will see how it sounds in the whole mix later, but right now this works for me. Oh, I want to apply something else. Yes, yes, to make it a little bit more, a uh, little, little bit more trashy. I want to have more trash.
Yes. Tak da tak da tak da. Tin tak da tak tin tak. So cool. Before. This is a whole like a complete sound which works perfectly. But I want to have character. I want to have more character always. Bam! Like a lo-fi, more of more kind of a thing. It's so so cool. So so cool. So awesome. I really like it. Let's leave it like this. Now it's done. Cool. Nice. Let's go to the overheads. Maybe the most compli Oh yeah, yeah. I'd say the most complicated thing on the drum set for me personally. So we have um, two ribbon mics, the RB500. Uh, so uh, if you don't have them, buy them. Awesome mics. Let's listen to them. Yeah, cool. Quite dry bass drum. There's a little tone in the in the snare. Any questions so far, by the way, please feel free to let me know. Yeah, it works. It works in some way. Good, good, good signal and sounds nice. I, is what I feel. All right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Works. Um. But I would do what I would do right now is I apply. I definitely go with the. With a uh, with a preamp. The cool thing about UAD also is that you that they automatic automatically adjust to stereo and mono, so you don't have to choose between two, so you don't um, have to. I don't know. Sometimes I confuse things, mess them up without even realizing it, and in the end, I'm like, oh damn it, something is weird. So cool. Um, let's listen. Yeah. Just saturation, nothing else. Works for me. Awesome signal. Already empty. Nice. Some highs, high frequencies, around 10k. I don't know, like two, three dB in. Yeah, this is cool. So what I do is basically I apply some drive um, to to create some saturation. Then I adjusted some higher frequencies. I just boosted them a little, and I boosted something uh, between um, uh, three and two kilohertz, or two and three kilohertz, just to get more punch from the snare drum, especially. So without. It's cooler, isn't it? It's just it just works. It it just works without doing anything. And just at the output, of course. So if I turn in drive, I have to adjust the output. I'll just, otherwise, it just will blow up the track. And if something like this happens here, for example, when you just saw the, it will it disappears when I click on it. Um, but if something goes over uh, zero dB, it's 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 not a big deal. It's it's just about listening. 
I just do not care if you know I have tracks sometimes I don't know how let's see how it looks on the on the stereo end it's still fine minus 1.8 dB oh I mean like with everything yeah we get there it's nice it's nice it's nice it's nice we have five well who cares it sounds good isn't it I mean it's distorted a little bit good Okay, cool. Now I want to still do some cleanup, so I will apply definitely the uh, Fabulous EQ. You can also do it with the Channel EQ from Logi. Uh, Logic. Okay, and I want to. Wow. Okay, I will definitely apply in front from the preamp a little low cut let's see if this changed anything yeah wow so cool let's see see how it jumps how it, now i turn it off the, just the low end when i kick uh, with the snare it just comes up so fast this is definitely the room i'm working in this is definitely the room definitely all right so I will clean up right now, what I do is I will clean up the, the, the mid part because overheads tend to do some, depends on the room, absolutely depends on the room, but do some bullshit in the, in the, in the mid part. So I will apply some EQ here. Just have, this is just about listening. I just start somewhere, usually about 200 Hertz because 200 is always a little bit annoying. Um, it, it, annoying on snare drums, toms and overheads. Most of the times. On snare drums uh, whatsoever, it's way more important to have something around uh, 200. Because that's the point where, you know, the the matter is. Alrighty. So now I apply, yeah, this is maybe it, but I definitely go with the low cut as well. It's a pretty tough one. Yeah, this is nice. This, this, is, this is fun. Now I go to, I think Antiti Lu 1308 is a little bit she or he thinks I'm rude. So sorry. Now I go to no. I first go to the my, one of my favorite EQs. So this is another plugin you actually can uh, do. You you get this from Logic, for example, when you click on. I show you. This is an emulation of the original Pultec um, EQP. What is it? A, I think it's one A, right? Or is it I A? No, it's one A. And when you go on, what is it? I think Dynamics. No, I think on, on EQ, of course. Vintage EQ selection and then Vintage Tube EQ. This is exactly the thing. And I can even show which which one of the uh, pull text because there are a couple of different ones. Mm, it's this here. Just... This side is here on top, and this side is on the bottom. This is exactly the same thing. Yeah, so if you want to do it with the logic, feel free. Super cool. 
Uh, oh, let's stay in this. Why not? Why not? No, I think I would go with the with, with the other one. I don't even know, but I would just do it. Uh, preamp. That's it. What I did here, you see boost, I applied boost and add, and this is actually called the pull tech trick because when you put in, when you put the, the frequency, the low frequencies on 100 hertz and you boost and add on the, uh, the frequency at the same time with the same amount of uh, boosting and adding, um, it will kind of convert uh, or, or push a frequency below 100 hertz to come out so so let's see what i did here i, I will do it in extreme in an extreme way so we just boost right now on seven uh the 100 hertz yeah you get a boost you get a boost in the uh in the lows that's it and now i go on seven as well and this happens It gets such a more more compact low low end actually, and I will do I want to do it in a very slight way only. Uh, it could be actually a little more. Yeah. And you know what? I will. I want to apply. Hey, go. Thank you. Uh, I want to apply a small, just a slight high cut. 15-ish, 14-ish, very slight. And I will apply Sooth. Sooth is awesome. Always Sooth. Do the same thing here, go a little bit up, push here also a little bit more. Something between 4 and 8k, and here a little bit, a little bit more of that. Wow! And what I will do, because it's hip-hop, not because of it, it's hip-hop, but I want to do something. I want to apply some compression, some more. I'll apply this. Nice, this is character. So let's see. That's all I did, by the way. I just put in some drive and that's it. This works. Yeah, the snare is a little bit... No, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Let's see how it sounds without everything. And on. Mm. Maybe the decapitator is a little bit too much right now. Oh. Hello. Thank you. A little bit less. All right. Uh, we are done with our main edit. Usually this takes me half an hour, but of oh no 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 <laughs> we forgot the toms. Let's just quickly do the toms. It's actually a re real uh, quick thing to do. Just put it in here. We start with a low tom right now. Nice. This will uh, this will turn out so cool. And I have this is my routine. I have for 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 low and high tom. I know my toms. I know the tun tunings I use. 
and I have always the same thing to do. First, I apply a preamp. I want to have distortion. I want to have drive. I want to have character saturation on toms because toms can sound so boring and just like a huge ball of something. Or another way to do it for all the Instagram drummers out there, the, the, which is called the Nebelhorn. I hate it. Uh, so what I do is I apply a little preamp uh, and I use for this, I think it's B, right? Damn it, wrong one. I go with the A. You can also use for this, uh, honestly not as good to be very honest, but I I, I like the preamp system of, of, of Universal. It just works so well and it just does what it should do. But I think you can also use You can also use from Waves. I think Waves has this Sheps plugin which you can use. Yes, you can use the, um, if you have it, if, or if you want to get it, the thing. Sorry, I'm so slow sometimes. Manchmal. <laughs> the Sheps Omni Channel does a similar job. You can turn in saturation and, and boost some things here and there and put uh, put on drive and what whatnot. But I do it with this one. I love it. It's so cool. I will apply it on both the homes, by the way. Hello. Hello. Can you please play. Hello. Ah, damn it! <sighs> Touch bar, they said. It's fun, they said. By the way, who's still there? There's just one viewer. Who's the one viewer? Is it still Niklas? Is, is, is it you? Or is there, is there another person right now? And by the way, um... I would like to know what, what I can do better also. Um, because it's my first Twitch stream ever. I think this is kind of like the guarantee that it sucks, isn't it? But anyway, hope you learned something. Well, so the one viewer out there, whoever it is, please let me know uh, how you feel, what's going on, if I should do something else and whatnot. But I want to finish this edit. So. I tune, I tune in, first of all, low frequencies, full, force, and high frequencies out, both 6 dB. And now I go on drive and turn it down with the output. Nice. And I turn the high, oh, no, maybe that's enough. Bam, full thing. I want to have some volume right now. Now I go, I go take my my EQ. Let's do it right now with the with this thing, which was the same thing. I go, I, I do a similar thing with the with the bass drum, if you remember. So I just turn down this. I will do a little notch right here. I will do a high cut and it will boost the upper section, the lower section, sorry, a little bit. A little more Q and a low cut. Um, that's This is my hardcore EQ and maybe a notch right here. I always do this. The notch you can apply around, you have to listen to it. Let's listen to it first. So I, I turn on, and now... Ha! Huh. This is cool, I like it. Let's, let's, but find the, let's find the notch. But... No, it's fine. Yeah, there, this is something which annoys me. This is so cool. Oh my god, look at this. I can do something else. I can... Oh. 
This is so nice. Yeah. And now, maybe what I can also do is I apply some uh, the transient designer just to make it a little bit shorter. Yeah, nice. I like it. Cool. Same procedure with the with this fellow right here. Yeah, but uh, I think I go on the mixer and then just I, th I think for now I just copy it. Um, so I did this. I did this. I did this. Done. I copy it and adjust it. That's it. Yeah, see, this is a little more annoying. I just adjust it, that's all. Uh, so, something's too much for me. Something there's. Yeah, I want to have a little bit more attack. <laughs> nah, I wanted to go with this. This is this is also cool. Yeah, I like it. It's a little muffy, but it works. Can live with that. Or no, keep it, keep it, keep it simple. All right, now the drum edit itself is done. So what I do right now, the next step is to check the phasing of all the tracks. This is something which is insanely underrated. You can gain so much more volume, so much more punch, so much, so much more accuracy in your, uh, in your chat, what? In your in your drums when you apply a proper phasing. So I try I try my best to to do it right now. And for me, the center is the snare drum. So everything evolves around the snare drum. The phase, the, the 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 snare drum is like my like yeah, yeah literally my phasing center. Yeah. So what I do is I start. I bring down the effects a little bit. I start with the with the snare drum and the snare bottom. What I already did. Hmm. I choose the beginning. Maybe that's better. Sounds good to me. Now I ask the the higher than the snare. Wow, I would say, I would say it's it's I have to I have to turn the face. Yeah, I have to turn the face because the standard gets so much more punch in some way, and it gets so much more accurate. It makes so much more sense at the same time. Uh, high eight snare, cool. Now effects and snare. Oh. Yeah. Also turning. My gut says turning. Oh my ear. Overhead snare.
I quickly turn. I, I can't hear properly. Uh, wait, let me, let me, mono. I would say I don't have to turn. It's a little difficult. The phasing right now between the overheads, the kick and the snare to figure out it's 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 just a little creepy. I would go with phase. I I I I turn the phase definitely, for at least for, for now. At least for now. Right. We'll see. So, yeah, it feels good. It feels good. What What do you think? It feels good. It definitely. Yeah, it, it definitely feels good. So the phasing is done now. I want to check now between the bass drums if I have to change there or anything. This is so cool. No. Cool. Th th this is a perfect example. So usually when you have, for example, a DIY sub kick, uh, because of the the reversing of the polarities and the structure itself of the speaker, it's uh, highly recommended to f to invert the phase from 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 the very beginning, just to get rid of some some weird stuff. And here you can see, and here definitely here over headphones at least, um, when I turn the phase, wait f till I uh, flip this on. If I turn the phase, the signal just all the bass just floats away. And now? No bass. Are there no bass? Nothing. And there it is. Perfect example. Good. No bass drums and overheads. Works for me. All right, phasing is done so far. Maybe I have to adjust. Oh, no, 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 no. There's always one thing. Toms and overheads. Always the same deal. I do this song. Works as well. Cool. Phasing is done. Sounds good to me. Now panning. Panning is very easy. Let's say let's say we are in hip hop right now. Yeah, pretty pretty clear. We're in hip hop. So I don't want to create a too, for me personally, a too wide stereo image. I want to keep it very compact and very, very tight up. And um, I think I think this is this is kind of cool uh, when 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 you don't pan the, the 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 overheads too much to the sides. So I just go oh, maybe yeah, maybe twenty five. Let's okay. Let's go with thirty. Yeah. And this, I, I know that the back then the, the, the overheads were in uh, Recorder Man, were recorded in Recorder Man, which means that one mic comes from the top and the other mic is kind of like standing behind my right shoulder facing the snare drum. So I have like, you don't, if, if you have the drums in front of you, you have one here and the other one behind you, both facing the snare drum. So you get a very close image. And uh, not too wide image. Instead of, for example, if you have a, uh, what is it called, like uh, a B or or TF or what is the other thing, even uh, Glyn Johns. 
is also much wider in sound. Um, and I like the recording, especially for hip hop, to just make it sound a little bit more tight. Um, if I want to have it tighter, of course, this is the whole thing behind it. Sometimes, for example, these days I'm using a mono overhead as well, which works perfectly in my uh, in my in my opinion. Um, to 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 kind of make the stereo image wider, but to put some some mono information in the in the very middle. Okay, that is, uh, that's it. So we have the stereo Im image. Yeah, nice. There's a little bit more on the left because the left mic is the one who's standing behind my right shoulder, facing the snare drum, and it because and it's because uh, it kind of yeah it kind of stands in front of the bass drum. So it's it's kind of weird. Um, It's kind of weird because it makes it, it puts the snare in the perfect middle of the of everything, but because it's facing the bass drum so much, the bass drum is just louder and more punchier. So you have the you have the feeling that you that the kick is on the left side a little. But if you want, for example, you can apply, which I have under tools, which is the S one imager, which is from Waves. And I just turn it a little if I, if I feel like. Now the bass drum is more in the middle because I literally turned it and it becomes a little bit more tighter. This works, this works perfectly before. Much more stereo, of course. It gets a little bit okay, a little bit too much in the middle for my perception at least. Like this way. Yeah, this works for me. This is cool. Again with a snare drum, I want to hear with the snare drum. Oh my god! Right now I feel that I should shouldn't invert the the the, the overheads. Now I go like this. It's the better feeling. All right, now leveling. Um, based on we kind of oopsie, oopsie, we kind of tune it in. Yeah, I like it. This is cool. It's super heavy. I like it. Bass drum is super punchy. Nice. Okay, right now my gut says not inverted. Anyway. Okay, right now I leveled the drums a little bit. For me, it's still, but this is because of the voice. Maybe I make the sound 
So a little less, uh, what did we learn? We have distortion here and compression here. A little bit less. Otherwise, super cool. That's it. This is leveling. We did editing, uh, then phasing, phase correction, which totally works for my, in my opinion. Now I want to apply, for some reason, I feel like applying the parallel compression already. It just, yeah. And then take the channels, bass drum in, because what I want from the, uh, the, like the parallel compression, the only reason I apply this is to, to get more punch, to get more, you know, you more it. And it's so freaking cool. So what I do is I apply actually a waste plugin. You can also apply any compression from Logic. Uh, I apply the API um, 2500 emulation. And I put the bass drum in mic into it, the snare drum mic into it. And that's it for now. Just I want to just just have some, you know, like some thing. Right. And this is something actually quite hard to explain. I, 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 I'm I'm not really good at this to be honest. I just again follow my ears what what, what sounds cool. So I adjust the threshold, like pretty much, pretty wide down, I feel. Yeah, so everything which comes over this level, minus 4 dB, gets compressed AF. Gets it all compressed, basically. Now I want to, uh, want to make an, I think, a quite quick attack, not too quick. Because I don't want to kill the attack so much, I actually want to have the attack. Now the ratio till infinity and release as fast as I can. Yeah, there it is. Maximum attack. That's all. And now it's here. Now it's not on. And now I just tune it in. Yes. Now we get a vibe. That's a vibe. That's cool. All right. Now what I sometimes do, but not too much. Um This is so cool. Da dum da 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 dum da 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 dum da 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 dum. Nice. I think I think I want to apply something to to the whole sum. So basically, yeah, core, parallel effects, overheads, and crush go all in this thing. Yeah. So awesome. And now I want to apply some stuff. I think I want to apply apply some some more saturation to the core structure, which could be cool. Maybe with. Uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, what can I use the radiator? I don't want to have the little radiator. There it is. Also, sound toys highly recommended. Oh wow, you can hear it. Apply some heat, yes.
Yeah, this is cool. It just gives something, no? And now some... I go with a dirty filter. Shout out to AJ Hall. He definitely inspired me to do this. Dirty filter. Um, this is a lot. Okay, so drive is basically the mix kind of a thing. Yeah, okay, got it. What is so loud? I want to have more attack on the snare drum. A little bit more of this. I mean, parallel compression is also fine. Let's give it a little bit more. And uh, maybe also give uh, notes enough. Okay, cool. I want to I want to know what, what's happening if I put an RC20 on the drums. I think it's uh color and texture, yes. All right. Yeah, works. Works for me. Maybe too much. Too much of this. Dad. This is cool. What do you think? I think it's I think it's pretty nice. I think it's pretty nice. Works for me. But I can put on the plugin. I have it on the mastering. And I have the UAD or the plugin from UAD, the Ampex S ATR 102. 
and it just works so so well and let's see how it sounds totally I just adjusted the tape speed here. Oh wait, this is cool. Wow, you can change the tapes. Oh, oh the, I didn't know that. Nice. Oh, this gets a little, 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 little too loud over there. Yeah. And I think we can do one more thing when I, when I think about it. We can do one more thing. I want to have a, 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 a reverb, but not any, just any kind of reverb. I know that some people, I want to, Create a bus for that, which is called, which is called, I put, you know what, there's a trick and uh, the, you can use something from the Abbey Road Chambers as well, but I also love, uh, we're going amps and pedals, amp designer, yes, that's nice. Amp designer. I want to. I want to search for something like a like a Fender, uh, like a Fender. What is it? Can I, what can I? How was it? I want to skip there. Huh. Yes. And I want to put all this. I want to put all this on. On a Fender. I want to, I want to see what, what what's going to happen. Yes. Now, boom. This is one option. This is this is a cool thing. I think right now it's time to, after four hours of streaming, uh, I think we came to a really, really nice goal. And as I said, I deal with, in this session, I'm gonna deal with uh, drum editing and uh, some, some effect stuff and phasing and like basic like recording and editing uh, topics, which are quite important. So, um, I think I do a break right now and we'll keep 
we'll, we'll keep up exactly this topic for next time where i gonna do uh we're gonna create a beat on top of it and also do some percussion layering to make everything you know more a little bit more like just more interesting uh i think i will think about the the next um the next live stream which is i right now i feel it's going to be on wednesday evening or on wednesday morning not really sure about that so far but i'll let you know uh first of all i want to thank you so 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 damn much for tuning in and uh just being with me the whole time it's just the freaking four hours i hope you really enjoyed it i hope you learned something i learned a lot for example that i can't use my tape machine while streaming which is uh this is awesome and um yeah i th i say see you next time my last sip of coffee which is gold as hell ah, but here it is this is the thing we just created and i think it's damn awesome see you then Tschüss alle zusammen!